நண்பர்களுக்கு வணக்கம் எல்லோரும் நன்றாக இருப்பீர்கள் This program is brought to you by Guruji TV. This YouTube video is a translation of the Tamil video of a renowned astrologer, Jyotish Mahaguru Aditya Guruji. The link of the original version, that is the Tamil video, is given in the description box of this video. And I am presenting you the English version of the Tamil video. This video is a translation of the master class of Guruji explaining the higher level concepts of astrology. In my last video, I explained the effects of Rahu during its major planetary period, that is Dasha of Rahu. In this live teaching session, I would like to clarify your doubts in astrology. Well, one of my students is asking a question. The question is, when Jupiter resides in 3rd house or 6th house or 8th house or 12th house to the ascendant, will it deliver benefits or adverse effects? Let me draw a chart where the native is Gemini ascendant and your question is, will Jupiter give benefits or bad effects? when it resides in the third house that is in Leo or in sixth house that is in Scorpio or in eighth house that is in Capricorn or in twelfth house that is in Taurus. Let me ask a question. Can Guru reside in third or sixth or eighth or twelfth house to the ascendant well, I am getting different answers from my students. Oh, one of my students says that this should not happen. My student says that since Jupiter is a natural benefic, it should not be in 3rd house or 6th house or 8th house or 12th house to the ascendant. It is not the right answer. It is quite normal to get few doubts when you are at basic level. Let me explain the intricacy. When a certain planet is in 3rd or 6th or 8th or 12th house to the ascendant, we can come to final prediction only after checking which ascendant it is and what is the house effect of the planet that resides in 3rd 6th or 8th or 12th house to the ascendant. I have mentioned a point in my article, the secret of Padagadibadi of Upeyarashi, that is the secret of Padagadibadi of dual signs. For native of dual sign ascendant, the Padagadibadi Jupiter and Mercury should be spoiled. If only Jupiter and Mercury get spoiled, it will deliver benefits. For example, let us imagine a chart where the native is Pisces ascendant. It is better when Jupiter resides in the 6th house to the ascendant, that is in Leo, rather being exalted in the house of Cancer, in the 5th house to the ascendant. The native of Pisces ascendant whose Jupiter gets exalted in house of Cancer will live a very ordinary life. In addition to this, when Jupiter is alone and gets exalted in house of Cancer, then the Dasha of Jupiter, that is major planetary period of Jupiter, will not bring any benefits. In some situation, when Jupiter is affected by conjunction of Ketu or affected by any other planet, then the major planetary period will be better. This is the higher level learning of astrology. You all being beginners, if you have any doubts, you can ask me. 
it is quite possible that beginners do not understand higher level of astrology please don't hesitate to ask your doubts the complete perception of astrology is attained if only you know the exceptions in addition to the rules and you should be able to apply those exceptions at the right time it is more important you all know that there is a general rule that no planet should not reside in 6th or 8th or 12th house in addition to this a benefic planet should not reside in 6th or 8th or 12th house if a malefic planet resides in these houses it is sort of okay this is it another rule we can raise many questions based on this like if an ascendant is a malefic can it reside in 3rd or 6th or 8th or 12th house let me put forward another question can a kendradibadi reside in these houses the art of astrology lies in knowing the exceptions and applying the rules and exceptions at the right situation for example in this natal chart the native is gemini ascendant let me ask a question now can jupiter for the native of gemini ascendant reside in 3rd or 6th house or 8th house or 12th house well you all say that for the native of dual sign ascendant it is good if padagadibadi resides in 6th house or 8th house or 12th house let me put forward another question in case if jupiter resides in the quadrant let me say in the 7th house to the native of gemini ascendant what will happen let me repeat for example let me say for the native of gemini ascendant jupiter resides in the 7th house to the ascendant then what will happen what will jupiter deliver jupiter is padakadibadi marakadibadi and kendradibadi and when jupiter resides in the 7th house to the native of gemini ascendant what it will deliver the very recent example is the life event of ex chief minister ms j jayalalitha the ex chief minister of tamil nadu ms j jayalalitha died during the dasha of jupiter needless to say the ex chief minister ms jayalalitha led such a victorious life in the field of politics by the very same jupiter everybody in tamil nadu knows that all the men in the party bowed at her feet whenever wherever they met ms jayalalitha this sort of reverence was brought was made possible by jupiter the very same planet jupiter delivered maraka maraka is not death it is rather a torment equal to death jupiter is a planet which is the reason for imprisoning her definitely it was a torment equal to death she was in jail while she was a chief minister of the state which was the worst part maraka is a torment which is equal to death the one who gets affected by marakadibadi will choose the better option as death this thought will be brought into the mind by marakadibadi i hope you understand how intense is maraka initially jupiter delivered a torment that is the days that she spent in the prison and eventually jupiter delivered the death itself jupiter is in quadrant house in the natal chart of ms jayalalitha the very same planet caused the death delivered the fame and it also caused the humiliation indeed jupiter gave fame to ms jayalalitha 
because the men in the politics bowed at her feet. Everything was under control. This high respect was delivered by the aspect of Jupiter that resided in Sagittarius, which is highly Subhatva. In the natal chart of Miss Jailalita, the moon resides in the house of Leo in conjunction with Mars, which is a full moon, and the sun resides in Aquarius in conjunction with Mercury. She was born in Magha Nakshatra and she was born during the month of Magha, that is mid February to mid March. The ascendant Lord Mercury in the Aquarius receives light energy from Magha Nakshatra and Jupiter in Sagittarius aspects the Magha Nakshatra. More the light energy, a native of higher class will be born. I have often mentioned this point in my articles. Here in this natal chart, there is enormous light energy. Jailalita is one among 10 crore people. She is an empress indeed. Does everybody is going to get a memorial in Marina Beach? Yet Miss Jailalita has got a memorial in Marina Beach. This memorial is going to stand the time and in future definitely there will be a lot of people who will be learning about Miss Jailalita. Therefore, the highest Subhatva of the planets delivers a long-standing fame and dignity. When Jupiter resides in Sagittarius, it resides in Mool Tricone status. Jupiter is in a status one level below exaltation status. Jupiter here it's not affected at all and it aspects both Rashi and Ascendant house. The moon which received the aspect of Jupiter in turn aspects the ascendant lord Mercury. Therefore, when there is a lot of flow of light energy, immense benefits were definitely delivered. Let me explain to your question. In the natal chart of Ms. Jailalita, if Jupiter was in 6th house or 8th house or 12th house, then Miss Jailalita would have not been a ruler of Tamil Nadu, yet it would have resulted in increased longevity. If Jupiter was in 6th house or 8th house or 12th house, she would have led a very normal, a married woman's life with husband and children and she would have lived till 85 or 90 years of age. This is how you must understand astrology. In the natal chart of Miss Jailalita, the Saturn aspects the 8th house and spoils the longevity of the person. This is the way you have to predict the effects of the planets. Saturn aspected the 8th house and spoiled the longevity of Miss Jailalita. Now let me change the position of Jupiter. In case if Jupiter resides in the 6th house to the Ascendant, that is in Scorpio, then the Saturn will have become Subhatva by the aspect of the Jupiter, the ninth aspect of the Jupiter. When Saturn becomes Subhatva by the aspect of Jupiter, then Saturn will increase the longevity of the person by aspecting its own house Capricorn, which is 8th house to the Ascendant. In this case, Miss Jailalita would have got married, would have got children and would have led a normal life but not as chief minister. Should have lived more than 85 years of age having got married. Should have spent her days with a good family living with her children. Do you understand astrology now? I have changed the position of Jupiter merely by one house. For the native of Gemini Ascendant, that is Mithuna Lagna, Jupiter is Padagadipadi, Kendradipadi, as well as Marakadipadi. Therefore, when Jupiter resides in the 6th house to the Ascendant, 
and as per bhavat bhavam when it is in the 12th house to the 7th house where it acts as padagadibadi marakadibadi and kendradibadi it will not have delivered the bad effects of the 7th house Jupiter will have delivered a good family life to Jayalalitha but not the life of a leader when it resides in the 6th house to the ascendant when a planet being padagadipati kendradipati marakadipati resides in the 12th house to its padaga house maraga house it will not deliver the house effects of the quadrant house this is a rule of astrology now this is the answer to your question now tell me when jupiter resides in the 6th house will it deliver benefits or adverse effects it all depends on the person to judge which is good and which is bad which appears to be good for you might appear bad to me and what appears bad to me might appear good for you Saturn should not aspect its own house. The rule that when a planet aspects its own house strengthens the house will not apply for Saturn. Please remember this point. This will not apply for the Pabatwa Saturn. Saturn astrologers predicted in a different way whereas I predicted that Miss Jayalalitha will be no more post 2017. However, certain astrologers predicted that the eighth house lord aspects its own house, which is the eighth house to the ascendant, so she will live long. The fact is, it is good when Saturn resides in the eighth house. In which way it is good? A person will have a long life if only Saturn resides in the eighth house, but not when Saturn aspects the eighth house. even when saturn aspects its very own house it spoils the house even if the native is capricorn ascendant and saturn aspects its own house makar capricorn it means the ascendant house is spoiled i have mentioned this point in many of my articles that you can't apply the point that capricorn gets strengthened when the ascendant lord saturn itself aspects the capricorn it is not valid here saturn spoils the ascendant house many astrologers predicted that the eighth house lord resides in the second house and it aspects its own house capricorn which is the eighth house to the ascendant and consequently she will have a very long life this is the point where they made the mistake Here Saturn is a planet which is responsible to have spoiled the longevity of the person. When Saturn has no subhatwa and aspects a house, then that house will be spoiled. In this natal chart, Saturn has not got any benefic connection like Jupiter or Venus. Miss Jayalalitha lived until sixty-eight years of age. since saturn aspected the 8th house to the ascendant and jupiter functioned as padagadipati kendradipati and marakadipati now let us come back to your question the question is you asked whether jupiter can reside in 6th house or 8th house or 12th house to the ascendant it depends on which ascendant you are There are certain rules in the original dictums which were not explained in detail. It was said like Jupiter should not be in sixth or eighth or twelfth house. However, there are natal charts of many millionaires in whose natal chart Jupiter resides in sixth or eighth or twelfth house. For the native of Cancer ascendant. if jupiter resides in the 8th house then the native will be a big millionaire i often reiterate certain points 
you must definitely learn fundamental rules of astrology thoroughly. And during the higher level of learning astrology, you have to learn the exceptions. And the final level of perception is to identify the criteria based on which certain rules and exceptions are combined in order to make the predictions. You should definitely learn where to apply the rules and where to apply the exceptions. A beginner of astrology might face some challenges to grasp the concepts that I teach you. Whatever I teach you now, you should store these information in your mind and you should recall these points when you are trying to make predictions. You should recall these points like, okay, our Guruji told these points for this particular situation, let us apply this. You know, I'm not regularly taking class. I'm taking classes uh, six months once or eight months once in order to make some clarifications regarding astrology concepts. Please try to learn the concept of Padagadibadi for dual signs. For the native of Upaya Lagna, the Jupiter and Mercury should be spoiled. The benefic must reside in the trines and the malefics should reside in the quadrants. This is a general rule. The natural malefic should not be the lord of trines. The highest concept of astrology is that the Pabatwa planets, that is malefic planets, should not be the lord of the trines. The natural benefics should not be the lord of the quadrants. This is indeed the intricacy behind the Padagadibadi concept. Let us imagine a natal chart where Jupiter is in the third house to the ascendant. As per this natal chart, the Jupiter in the third house will aspect the seventh house to the ascendant and definitely it will deliver benefits. I often reiterate a point that when a planet resides in the third house to the ascendant, then there is a possibility that the planet can reside in the star whose lord can deliver benefits to the ascendant. The stars that are present in third house to the ascendant is, that is in Leo, or Magam, Puram and Uttiram. That is Maga, Purva Falguni and Uttra Falguni. In the 11th house, the star that resides are Ashwini, Barani, Krittigai. That is Ashwini, Barani, Kartika. Here, which is the most friendly planet for the Ascendant Lord? Well, I hear multiple answers from my students like Venus, Saturn, Rahu, You should definitely learn the basics very well. Oh yes, finally I hear the answer now from one of my students. Of course, the most friendly planet to Mercury is Sun. Venus is a friendly planet, but the most friendly planet to Mercury is Sun. Then comes the friendly planets Venus and Saturn. In astrology, there are no excuses at all. In order to learn astrology, it needs immense involvement. One should be extremely passionate, crazy about learning astrology. This will help to learn the intricacies of astrology. If only you learn the intricacies, it is when you are learning true astrology. What is the general rule? The friendly planets to Mercury or Venus and Saturn. But the question I asked is, which is the first and foremost friend to Mercury? Sun is the most friendly planet to Mercury. Mercury always travels with Sun and it treats the Sun as the most friendly planet. The secondary friendly planets are Venus and Saturn. These are the fundamental rules of astrology. I don't know how you miss these rules. In the same fashion, I have never told that Jupiter and Venus are dead enemies. The foremost enemies for Venus are 
sun and the moon. Definitely you have to learn the intricacies of astrology. Because astrology is an art by which we can predict the death and the birth of a person. This is not a game of kids. Could you imagine what questions I receive from my clients sometimes? A client will ask me whether they can do surgery which costs 40 lakhs. They entirely make decision based on my prediction. You can imagine how much trust they have on an astrologer. The client said that the surgery costs 40 lakhs and they have to sell their house in order to pay for the surgery. The following are the words that a client said to me. Sir, you are like God, please help me. There are many situations like this case. A husband would have met an accident if the wife pays the bill for surgery. If, this, if there is a solid chance, then the husband will be alive. But if there is no scope, then the wife will have no support in life financially as well. In all these cases, astrologers, you guys have the responsibility to make the correct predictions. Astrology is a Shastra that was meant to help these people. Therefore, you have to be very careful and you cannot or you should not miss any calculation at any point of time. Once a client expressed how his wife expired and within few months how he lost his son as well. I was sobbing and sobbing for 10 minutes. I couldn't control my emotions because an astrologer is also after all a human being. The client is Scorpio Rashi. The wife is also Scorpio Rashi and the son, I don't remember what Rashi he is. There were three to four members with Scorpio Rashi. He said that he has been wandering like a lunatic in his life since two years and he had not slept well for two years. His wife, who was completely in good health, became suddenly critical and died in 20 days. Seems his wife was affected by blood cancer. He said that his wife was so endearing towards him and she got admitted only for 20 days at the hospital and she was in bed for 20 days and on the 21st day the wife expired. He had two children, one son of 15 years old and one daughter of 17 years old. He said that he consoled gradually himself post his wife's death and while he was still in the recovery stage another tragedy happened. His son who was a swimming champion while swimming in the swimming pool of Velacheri drowned due to heart attack and he too expired. The father who was unaware when this tragedy was happening seemed to have been talking on the phone to somebody else. His son was a state level champion and the doctors have confirmed that it was a heart attack. The last moments before the death of his son was more tragical as the father was talking over the phone while the coach was giving first aid treatment to his son. While the coach was giving first aid treatment, the father did not realize that it was his son who was in trouble, who was struggling for his life and the father was talking on the phone to somebody else. It was later he realized that it was his son as there was a crowd which surrounded the coach and the son, the father was totally unaware of the crucial situation. It is three months after his wife's death, his son as well died. Imagine how tragical the situation was. I predicted that he did not sleep for a couple of years. He agreed to that. He said that he couldn't sleep at all. And his daughter also has been crying during the nights without sleeping. Because she lost her mother and her own brother. He told me that his home was like hell and he couldn't console his daughter who has been crying always. 
because of the loss of two family members he said that he really wanted to die but he lives for the well-being of his daughter astrology indicates all these events by the natal chart and it is the responsibility of an astrologer to help the client what they have to do in their life a 50 year old man might need to have a second marriage for some reason even if the man is not interested his parents are alive and they will not let the son stay unmarried the parents were really concerned about their son's future that he has to stay alone if he's not married again post the marriage of his daughter it is at this situation client approached me he told that he was not at all interested in getting married but his parents were constantly forcing him as they were afraid that when they grow old like 75 years or 80 years of age and when they pass away their son would live alone without any support when their granddaughter becomes 22 or 23 years old of age she will get married and she will live in her husband's house consequently their son will be all alone in his life this was the concern of the elders in his family the elders were concerned that their son should get married while they are alive whereas the client told me that he lost his wife in front of his eyes two years back and he was not willing to marry another girl having said all these astrology is an art by which we can make accurate predictions at these crucial situations sometimes there are situations where an astrologer has to convey the predictions in a different manner where the role of an astrologer was not to be played as a professional rather a human being even if we have the slightest hope that the person might recover then 40 lakhs paid for the surgery has less importance than the life of the person because here there is a scope am i right while i am making predictions for matchmaking even if i get the slightest doubt then i will ignore the natal chart whatever it is because marriage is such a huge important event and significant part of life because whether it is a man or a woman they are going to be in trouble for the whole life i will reject the natal chart of the groom or the bride even if i have the slightest doubt that they will not be compatible with each other i will take decision without any emotions or grace I don't believe in doing parigara for all these. If an astrologer says some parigara suggesting to go to few temples, then it is vain. In contrary to this, when the client asked whether to spend 40 lakhs for surgery or not, then even if you have the faintest hope that the person has a chance to recover, then you have to suggest that they can spend 40 lakhs of money for the surgery explaining the situation even though the sick man was going through a tough major planetary period like dasha of padagadibadi and the bukti of marakadibadi yet when we still have a little hope we must definitely give hope to the client i cannot say to my client that her husband has very slim chances to recover so no need to pay 40 lakhs of money for the surgery and let him die that is totally graceless even if there is a small loophole i have to definitely suggest that they can pay 40 lakhs of money for the surgery and save the life of the husband for example the aspect of jupiter which is an antidote to this word situation is the loophole knowing all the worst criteria in case if an astrologer insists on doing the surgery and imagine the person dies then what would happen the astrologers will be strongly criticized 
not only astrologers, astrology will also be criticized. Imagine the situation of an astrologer in this case. What will happen? The family will curse that they lost the money and they lost the life of the family member as well. Sometimes astrology itself is blamed or criticized for the mistakes that an astrologer makes. The reason why I narrate all these events is that the students who listen to this class should not learn astrology at the superficial level. You all definitely should learn astrology to the core. Once you attend my session, then definitely you have to take a leap and you have to go to a higher level of learning. If I ask you a question that which is the foremost friend for Mercury, definitely you should able to recall the planet Sun. Why I asked you this question? You should have understood the intention of my question. I told you that the star lots of the stars that reside in the 3rd and 11th house will be friendly planets. The stars that are present in the 3rd house to the ascendant that is in Leo or Magam, Puram and Uttiram that is Maga, Pura Falguni and Uttra Falguni and in the 11th house the stars that resides are Ashwini, Bharani and Kritigai that is Ashwini, Bharani and Kritika. There will be a star lord in the 3rd and the 11th house friendly to the ascendant lord in a natal chart. The stars that reside in the 3rd house to the ascendant house are Puram and Uttiram that is Purva Falguni and Uttara Falguni and the stars that reside in the 11th house are Barani and Kritika. So when I ask the question that which is the most friendly planet to Mercury Immediately you have to understand the motivation of my question. The star lords of Kritika and Uttara Falguni that is Uttiram is Sun which is the most friendly planet to Mercury. And the star lord of Puram that is Purva Falguni that resides in Leo is Venus and the star lord of Barani that resides in Aries is Venus which is a friendly planet to the Mercury. The arithmetic is so simple and you have to understand this. When Jupiter resides in 12th house to the ascendant it will deliver only benefits. What is the reason? Let us imagine a natal chart where the native is Gemini ascendant and Jupiter resides in the 12th house to the ascendant house. It will deliver only benefits. Well, I hear the answer from one of my students that Jupiter is near Dikbala. Yes, of course you are correct. When Jupiter resides in the 12th house to the ascendant house, it is very near Dikbala that is directional strength. There are totally six strengths of a planet. Sthanabala, Digbala, Drigbala, Kalabala, Ayanabala, Cheshtabala. I repeat, the six strengths of a planet that is Shadbala is classified as Sthanabala, Digbala, Drigbala, Kalabala, Cheshtabala and Naisargikabala. Among these strengths, the first three are classified as the most important one. Sthanabala, Digbala and Drigbala are the most important strengths for the planet. Please don't worry when a planet resides in the 6th house, 8th house or 12th house to the ascendant house. Because in this case when Jupiter resides in the 12th house to the ascendant, it is near Digbala. So there are no worries. You have to check whether the planet has got Sthanabala or whether the planet has got Digbala that is directional strength or whether the planet has got Drigbala the concept of Subhatva which I mentioned. What is Subhatva? Subhatva means the conjunction or aspect of a natural benefic. Drigbala means the aspect of a natural benefic. It is part of the concept of my Subhatva which is Drigbala. 
It is not actually my concept indeed because I am not a sage. The expanded concept of Drigbala which was said by the sages is Subhatva. Indeed, I did not discover the concept of Subhatva. Subhatva is the concept of Drigbala which was said by our sages, which is nothing but the conjunction or the aspect of a natural benefit. Sukshma strength is a concept that I have created and defined. Many have agreed that Sukshma strength is a concept of Guruji and I coined the word Sukshma strength. I brought this new word Sukshma strength into the world of astrology. I agree that Subhatva is a concept which is indeed said by the sages. Subhatva is nothing but Drigbala. Well, in my next video, I am going to share much more intricacies and I am going to continue this video. Before that, let me ask a question. Can anybody become millionaire when Jupiter resides in 6th or 8th or 12th house to the ascendant house? Please write your answers in the comment section of this video. The link of Aditya Guruji's website is given below in the description box of this video that is accessible by both iOS and Android users. The link of Google Play Store app is also given in the description box that is available for only Android users. The Tamil version of this video is also available. Please check the description box and write your feedback to astro.writeus at gmail.com. Thank you.